We are going to figure the Laplace transform of the function t to the nth power, and the n right here, it can be any non-negative whole number. That means we can have n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or so on, right? Anyway, in this video, I'm not going to use the definition of Laplace to do this. You can try it, it will work, but I will show you guys another way right here. In one of my previous videos, I have mentioned it that there was one Laplace transform I really like, right? And that's really useful as well. This is the one we are going to use right here. We will use the fact that the Laplace transform of e to the at, which is equal to 1 over s minus a, and in order for this to be true, s has to be greater than a, right? And if you look at this, we have a and a right here, and the a can be any real number. However, just to make my argument work out nicely later on, let me just say I want this to be true for positive a values only. Technically, it's true for all a, but I just want to use this fact right here, alright? I want to restrict myself, a is positive, that means both of these are positive. Alright, so I don't want to use the definition, what can we do? Well, I will show you, as you can see, right here we have an exponential function, right? And right here we have a rational function, right? Let's talk about the Taylor series expansion for the exponential function and also the rational function. So we'll be using series. And before I do the series, you know we will put the series in the summation form. Let me just write this right here. So this is my note. Whenever I'm writing the sigma, the summation notation, right? This is going to mean that we will have sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. I just don't want to write down this like so many times later on. So for simplicity purpose, let me just put down sigma right here. Okay, so let's see what do we know for the Taylor series, all right? We have e to the something, and let's talk about this first. Let me write down, okay, we know e to the x. The Taylor series expansion for e to the x, center d is 0, it's going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, and then plus x to the third power over 3 factorial, and so on, right? However, we can put that in the sigma notation form. Namely, e to the x is the same as saying sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. I said it right here already, okay? And we will have x to the nth power and then over n factorial, okay? And this is wonderful because this is true for all x. So with that being said, I can just go ahead and plug in 18 to this x here and then 18 to this x right here, right? In another word, we see that e to the at it will be sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity, and then I'll put down parentheses, and we put down at right here, and then to the nth power, and over n factorial. At the end, let me just write this as a to the nth power, t to the nth power, so we will have e to the at being the summation a to the nth power, t to the nth power, all over n factorial. And this is one of the facts that we'll be using later on. And let's look at another one. Well, I also want to write this in terms of its Taylor series expansion, right? But I'm going to base over this fact first. I'm going to look at 1 over 1 minus x, right? This right here, you know it's going to be 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third power and so on. In another word, this is the same as saying sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity, x to the nth power, right? There's no factorial or whatsoever. However, this right here it is only true when you have the absolute value of the x to be less than 1. And because of this, you'll see why I want to just say all my a's right here has to be positive to make my argument work. At the end, we'll still end up with a really good formula for the Laplace transform t to the nth power. All right? All right, so now let's look at 1 over s minus a, well, I want to use this fact to help me out. To do so, I need to make sure that I have this one right here, right? Because I have the one on the top match already. I need to match the one, and this right here should be a one as well. How can I do that? Well, here we have s minus a. I can just go ahead and factor on s, can we, right? Let's go ahead and do so. So let me factor the out as one over s, and then I will put this down as times one, still one on the top over, let me put down parentheses. Originally, I had this x, and then I factored it out, so now I will have a 1, the 1 that we want, right? The minus stays the same, 
Here we have the A, originally, where I factored here the S, that means I can divide it by S. So in another word, we have A over S. So here we have 1 over S, and here we have 1, which matches with this one, and this one matches with that one, and the minus match with this minus. A over S is pretty much the same as this X, but in order for me to tell you, this is the same as that by plugging. I have to make sure that a over s has to be less than 1. Well, let's see. We have this fact, isn't it? We know that, let me just put this down right here. s is greater than a. Well, I can just go ahead and divide both sides by a. So you can see this is s over a, which is greater than 1. And then I will just do the reciprocal on both sides. So in another word, I get a over s, which is less than 1, isn't it? Well, uh, I don't want this to be too small either, because if this is turned out to be negative 5, yes, negative 5 is less than 1, but negative 5 wouldn't satisfy this condition. If you apply the absolute value, well, it's going to be bigger than 1. This is the place that I really would like to have the A to be positive. So now you can see right here, because A is positive, so that means this quantity right here has to be positive. That means a over s has to be in between of 0 and 1. A over s has to be in between of 0 and 1. That means A over s satisfies this condition. So it checks. That means I can legitimately tell you this is the same as 1 over s times this right here. I can just go ahead and plug in A over s into this x right here. It is the summation going from 0 to infinity, and we will have A over s inside, and then raised to the nth power. And now, this is 1 over s times the summation. This is a to the n over s to the n. At the end, you can see that I have s to the first power, s to the nth power. I can distribute, right? So altogether, we will have the summation. Let me write it down better. The summation, a to the nth power over s to the m plus 1 power, isn't it? And this represents that. 1 over s minus a, all right? So this is what we have, which is really, really nice. And now I will show you what we are going to be using, what we are going to be doing with this 2 right here. So I am going to look back to here. So let me just draw an arrow. What we'll do first is, instead of putting down e to the 18 in the Laplace transform right here, I will change this to its series form, right? So in another word, I will have the Laplace transform. And e to the at, as we talk about, is this. So we have the summation a to the n, t to the n, over n factorial, right? And let me emphasize by putting parentheses around this right here. And then we have the brace for the Laplace transform. And this is equal to 1 over s minus a, which is that, right? So sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity, and I will just still write this in blue. That is equal to this right here, a to the n over s to the n plus 1. Right? This is really nice. And now, here is one small technical part. I will just tell you guys what the uh, fact is. All right? right here, we are doing the Laplace of a sum. And this is technically an infinite sum because n goes from 0 to infinity. However, the fact is, the Laplace of a sum, it's a sum of the Laplace. That means we can change the order of this Laplace and also the summation. And this is also true even though we have infinite sum, all right? So let me do this for you guys. This is the same as saying we have the sum goes first, all right? And then we have the Laplace inside. And this right here states inside, which is a to the n, t to the n over n factorial. Right? And this right here should be the brace because we have the Laplace transform right here first inside. And then parentheses for the summation on the outside. And this is still the same as the summation. And then we have a n over s to the n plus 1, just like this. All right? So this is what we have at the moment. And keep in mind, both of the summations, they are going from n is equal to 0 to infinity, n is equal to 0 to infinity. And now you can just kind of compare the inside. 
And notice that both of them have a to the n, a to the n, right? And this is what I will do next. Inside here, let's look at the Laplace transform of this. Well, remember, in this here, t is the only variable. The other letters are just the uh, constants, right? And by linearity, and that's one of the reasons why that we can switch the order of the Laplace and the sum. By linearity of Laplace, what we can do is we can take this outside, and we can also take the 1 over n factorial outside, because they're just a constant in the t world inside of the Laplace. So what we'll get is, OK, we still have the summation on the outside, and let's put it down this way for you. Let me write down 1 over n factorial first, right? I put this 1 over n factorial outside. And then I will do the Laplace, and we will have the t to the nth power. This has to stay inside because t is the variable. And then I will put down the a to the nth power at the end, right? And this is still the summation like this. And this should equal to sigma. And let me write this as 1 over s to the m plus 1 power. And then I'll put the an on the side like this. So multiply by an, right? So this is what we have. And now, if you look at both of these other summation, n goes from 0 to infinity. And if you look at this is a to the nth power, this is also a to the nth power. You can look at this too as what we call the infinite polynomial in terms of a. And yes, I know I restrict a to be greater than 1, but it will still work out nicely. What I'm trying to see, say is, if you look at left and the right as an infinite polynomial in terms of a, so you have all the terms as a to the nth power, a to the nth power, right? This right here are just the coefficients, depending on the n values. And one conclusion that we can draw is this right here, this coefficient on the left-hand side, it has to be the same as this coefficient right here on the right-hand side. They must be the same, right? So with that being said, you can say that we will have the 1 over n factorial times the Laplace transform of t to the nth power. It has to be the same as this, 1 over s to the m plus 1, isn't it? And you see, we are almost done. Because I need to isolate the Laplace transform of t to the nth power, well, I can just go ahead and show you by multiplying by n factorial on both sides. How is this? So that this and that will cancel. At the end, let me write it down nicely for you guys. The Laplace transform of t to the nth power is equal to n factorial on the top over s to the n plus 1 power. And this is it. And once again, this is only true when n is equal to non-negative whole numbers, namely 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, so on, so on. Right? How cool is this? New chronicle by the way.